On this channel, I specialize in making really complex looking images easy to create. So just follow along with my step-by-step -step tutorial of this painting and you will amaze yourself. Okay, so as always, I'm using the app Procreate on the iPad with the Apple Pencil, but you could probably use my techniques and my process on a different app, on a different tablet, and still achieve success. But within Procreate, I've opened their default A4 canvas, which is 297 by 210 millimeters at 300 dpi. The color profile that I'm using is the sRGB, the code that ends in 2.1, and it's here on the list within Procreate. The brushes that I'm going to be using are free within the app Procreate. So within airbrushing, I'll use the soft brush. Within artistic, I'm going to use the leatherwood brush, which I'm going to amend, and I'll show you how I'm going to do that later on. I'm going to use within organic, the rainforest brush, and quite appropriately within luminance, I'm going to use the nebula brush, and I'm also going to use the light pen brush. Again, these are all free within the app. I've also created a color palette, and each of these colors has a hexadecimal code. All you need to do is type them in one at a time, press enter, the color will appear in this little circle, and then you can just tap it together to create your own version. All the codes are down in the video description, or next to those codes is a link that takes you to my Patreon page, and you can download the color file for free to save you some time. And Patreon is the place where you can go and support content on this channel and gain access to exclusive content too. Like for example, extended versions of my tutorials where I just go into extra detail, add extra elements, as well as entirely different content too. Okay, with all that said and done, let's get started. So we are dealing with a space scene, so we're not gonna have a white background, we're gonna have, let's face it, a black background. So let's just put it down here towards the blackest color. Okay, so on layer one, I'm gonna change the blend mode from normal by tapping on the little N, scroll down to the add, Rainforest brush initially. I have changed it, so I'll show you what it looks like reset, so you can see it there. Tap on it again, stroke path. I'm going to change it from the default 27% to maybe about 50%, and it just creates more of a gap between each part of this texture. On my colors, I'm going to go for the second color on the top row. I'm going to have the brush size at 5% and the opacity at around 20%. So layer one, I'm going to put a point or a collection of points in the center. And then from that, I'm going to start sketching out a spiral shape. Now it doesn't have to be the most perfect, perfect spiral at all. It just needs to be a general spiral shape. So we've got an arm of the spiral there. And then from this point, we're going to do the same thing, but just kicking out this way a little bit. And then from here, we can have another one, maybe kicking out in this direction. Again, this doesn't need to be perfect at this stage at all. Maybe just another one in there. Okay, that's gonna be our starting point. Maybe I'll just blur that in a little bit. So we'll go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, and blur it in at 10%, why not? I'm going to create another layer, layer two. Again, I'm gonna change the blend mode from normal, scroll down to add. I'm gonna put the brush size up to 10%, keep it at 20% opacity. And I'm just going to, from the outside, start working inwards a little bit. We want more of this kind of mottled texture in the mix. And again, so there's a difference between pressing on hard and pressing on lightly. I'm kind of just grazing the surface a little bit, allowing it to build up, which means that the gaps between it are not as big because this is pressure sensitive. And if you press hard, then the gaps between it get larger and also the opacity gets stronger. So I'm just kind of grazing allowing it to just glide along the screen, build up some of this texture more gradually, like this. We can also work in between these arms as well. We're not going to be, we're not going to be having empty areas, okay? I'm gonna create another layer, layer three, change the blend mode to add again. I'm going to use the third color along, keep the same settings, and just start adding some of this in the mix. Just follow loosely the arms of the galaxy spiral. Again, all these layers, and keep them on separate layers, I can go back in and I can adjust them, amend them as I need to later on. Create another layer though, layer four, change the blend mode to add again. So with this fourth color, same settings on the brush, I'm just gonna add some of this. And you can really start to see the kind of mottled, really nice appearance 
some bits we're going to add and just sort of smooth them in and adjust them as we need. But for now, I think this kind of broken texture is working quite well. Just into that. So we're going to have another layer, go to our fifth color along this time. And this is where we're going to start really ramping this up a little bit. So you, you can see it's quite a significantly lighter color anyway. That's going to be perfect. We will need to change the blend mode to add once more. I'm going to put it down to 5%. I'm just going to get the center in there a little bit more distinctly. I think that's going to be helpful. And then again, just lightly start to build in our textures. Allowing it to gather more into the, this center area. But it doesn't mean we need to neglect the, the middle parts. I'm going to take all of these top five layers, merge them together. I think at this point, I'm quite happy with that. Just base effect, and then I'm going to go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, and just soften them in, probably to about the 10%. They're still there, but they're just softened in, more subtle. I'm going to create a layer on top, change the blend mode again to add. I'm going to go in with the airbrushing soft brush. I'm going to go to this color, which is fourth from the right. I'm going to have it at around 10% size and 10% opacity. And just in the center here, start to tap that in a little bit. 15% size, a few more taps, 25% size, a few more taps. And we're just building this in more and more. 35%, a few more taps, 50%, a couple of taps, I got to 65, just a couple. There you go. Uh, I will add more of this, but that'll do initially. I'm going to create another layer, change the blend mode to add once more. I'm going to go to this yellow color, third, from the right, down to 5% size, stay at the 10% opacity. Tap that in a few times just to get the brightness. 10% size, a couple of taps. Let's just really go for it now. 30% size, a couple of taps. That I'll probably do for there. And then I'm going to skip the white, going to go straight to the end. 30% size, a couple of taps. It's really starting to build in that brighter, more orange color now, which I think will help. And that's starting to create some of the overall glow that I think is going to really work. We'll go and create another layer. Again, change the blend mode to the add. I'm going to go back to my brushes, luminance, nebula brush. Now on the nebula, I've changed the color dynamics and hue to none. So when I choose a color, like the blue here, it's going to be all that kind of blue and it's not going to shift to greens and other things as I go along. So it's much better. So on this new layer with the nebula brush, I am going to use the fifth color blue. 5% size and low opacity around 10%. And as we come sort of around here, I'm just going to start building in a bit more of this glow. I have to go over it a few times to really build up the impression, and that's fine. It's not going to destroy any of the glow that we've already created. It might mix with it a little bit, but that's okay. But we just need to get some of these spiraling arms just a little bit more exaggerated perhaps stay on the same layer i'm going to go to this darker second color same brush 10 percent size and again just maybe go over this a few times in the outer areas over here I just really want to get kind of destroy some of the blacker areas of the peripheral soften them in Anywhere where it's getting towards the center that looks just too dark, you can just go over them a little bit, lighten them up. And that's just creating the overall impression now that I think is starting to work. It has some texture, but not too much. So I'm gonna create a new layer, change the blend mode to add again. Again, I'm gonna change probably back to the organic rainforest brush, same settings. Let's go in with this light blue, which is the sixth color along. 3% size, let's put it up to 30% opacity. Let's see how we go with that. Yeah, it's a little fierce, a little strong, so let's dial that back a little bit. Maybe we'll put that down to 15. Again, we can just start to build in some more of this kind of model texture. So go along the, the lighter sections of these arms and just add a bit more of this. Maybe I'll put it up 5% size, maybe just has a slightly bigger impact. I'm adding these as they go around 
and wrap around the center area a little bit more. Then the same layer, increase that to 8%, expand that out a little bit. Go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, blur that in to about the 8%, create a new layer, change the blend mode to add, stay with the rainforest brush, and again, maybe just build some of this in. I'm just gonna go a little lighter this time. I don't wanna to add too much. We are gonna add some layers over the top. I'm just adding a, a bit more of it in here first. Then I'm perhaps gonna go backwards to the fourth color, which is this really nice little purple, almost in the pink. Add some of this in the mix too. Probably notice it a little bit more around the, again, the edges, the outer parts of the spiral. And it can come a little bit nearer as well crouch a bit more in the center areas in places. Why not? You can really control the, the kind of the areas for the colors of this. I'm just showing you the techniques. If you want to sort of go off in your own color scheme a little bit, then feel free to do that. Okay, uh, perhaps I just blur that in just a little bit. So 5% maybe. Okay, I'm gonna create a new layer, layer seven. I'm gonna keep the blend mode to normal this time. I'm gonna go to my Leatherwood brush, tap on it. I've changed the stroke path spacing to 45%, which means we have more of a gaps between each section of that brush. I'm gonna to go to the third color on the bottom row, 2% size and 60% opacity. And I'm gonna start, I'll zoom in. I'm gonna start adding this texture so that it kind of maps onto some of these other things that we've already got, but it doesn't need to strictly, absolutely stick to them. I think maybe on the, the outer parts, you're gonna see it more distinctly when it aligns here. But as it gets towards the center, you don't need to worry too much about the arms of the spiral you've already created. So I'm gonna put that down to 1%. I think maybe at 1%, we have a little bit more refined control, creating kind of lines and shapes. So just imagine like a, a branch that spirals round and it might have little smaller branches that kick out and grow off. And then it can get closer and closer as it spirals round until it really kind of hugs that middle shape. And then you can have another one that's really close to it. And again, just kind of spirals around. Perhaps we'll try a warmer color as we come near the center. So I'll try that middle color. We'll zoom in a little bit more. We can just start to spiral this round. And I'm, I'm being quite haphazard. I definitely kind of want that sense of shape, but I don't want to be too controlled with it. So I'm being quite scruffy really. I can scribble it in if I really want to condense it and darken it up to. And then we can have sort of breakaway bits of it. It's not all going to be necessarily collect connected. It might just have some fragmenting to neighboring shapes. Even when it gets in the center area, you're going to have some fragmentation as well. Splintering off. It might be connected with a little branch, but it might also just break away into a texture of its own. Perhaps I'll go for the lighter color. Reserve that for the lighter areas, more towards the center. Go back to the middle of the three colors. I think that seems to be the best option for the majority of areas. Again, allow this to kind of splinter off. Again, allow this to push out. Now that's looking too bright in this darker area. So we keep the, the brighter colors for the center area. So we'll go to back to this third color, the darker one, and these outer areas, we're gonna probably just use this darker color there. Now, once you feel like you've got quite a substantial amount of this put in, we could go to the layers, duplicate, transform. Now it's on uniform, so we can increase the size perhaps, maybe even rotate it with this little green part find an alignment that you think works and adds to what you've already created. Merge it down. I'm gonna to go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, and blur that in to about the 5%, I think helps. I'll create a new layer on top. Still the blend mode is on normal, still with this dark color. Perhaps in addition, I'll go in with the airbrushing soft brush, lower part of 2% size, 20% opacity, and I can just start to go in there now, whoops, start to go in there now, and perhaps just 
really focus this a little bit. We've got the starting point with what we've already done, but perhaps we can just control it a little bit more, dictate where it goes. Even 20% is a bit strong, so 15% perhaps. Again, just add some breakaway textures. We're using the darker color, so anywhere where it looks just a bit too bright, a bit too ready and light for some areas, you can just go over and just darken them up if need be. Strengthen up some of these little textures. I think they work better then. Yeah, and I think I do prefer it when we can go over it and just sort of bolster them, strengthen them up. Maybe just create little connection points here too. Again, some fragmented breakaway pieces. So I'm going to just continue adding more of this kind of noise and texture all over these areas. It's a low opacity on the airbrush, so it's going to take you a little longer, but you're not going to notice any jarring brush marks necessarily. I think it's going to be quite a subtle sort of adding of texture. Doing get dashes, allowing them to keep some gaps in places. I'm also going to use the middle color perhaps as we get more, again, more towards the center. Back to the darker color as we get further away. Perhaps it can even increase the size of the top end of 2% as we get further out. We're not going to notice too much of these textures once we get into this darker area, really, compared to other things. So you don't need to worry too much. It really is just the texture that we probably need to focus on more in the lighter areas, a little bit more anyway. Zoom in a touch, back down to the more focused. Lowest part of 2%. Again, just a few breakaway textures, a bit more fragmenting before we're done. Okay, I'm going to merge that down. Maybe just towards the center, I can go in with the eraser set to the airbrushing soft brush. 10% size, 15% opacity, and just subdue it a hint in the center, not too much, just a touch. I'm going to create a new layer, layer 8, change the blend mode to add. I'm going to go in with the airbrushing soft brush, set to this warm color on the end of the top row. 15% size, 15% opacity, just add a bit more of that glow in the center there, not too much. Then going to switch to this first color on the bottom row. Still with the soft airbrush at 2% size, 15% opacity. And I'm just going to start modeling in some textures, maybe up in this upper region. Just tapping it in. I've already got a lighter area anyway, so I'm just having it in the mix. Perhaps even a touch bigger, 3%, 15% opacity still. Just modeling it in. Increase the size to 6%. A little bit more of that. Not too much, that's too strong. I'm going to stay on the same layer. Second color on the bottom row. Okay, and just start to build in some more of these colors again. Start to ramp some of it up as we get more towards this bottom area. Now I'm using the soft brush airbrushing, so it really is going to smooth in some of these textures. I just want to increase the brightness in this general area. I think it will work. With the brightest of the blue colors, so the sixth color along, down to the 3% size. And I just want to be a bit more focused, so maybe even, well, 2% and lower on the opacity at 10%. And I just want to include some more focus points of this light blue. We're not quite at the star pinpoints yet, but we are getting more focused kind of areas of points of light almost, but not quite stars. So on that basis, we're probably going to add some stars. So let's go to layer nine, change the blend mode to add. Let's change the brush to the luminance light pen. 
and we'll stay with this light color. We'll put the size of the brush at 5% and 100% opacity and probably just near the outside initially. So we can press lightly, put your palm on the screen. I think it helps just create more stable points of light rather than them becoming kind of dashes, which don't look good. So you can just rest it on, have some really gentler points that you're not pressing on much at all. And then other ones where you're, you're really firmly pressing on, even create a little bit of a scribble, almost like a round shape, just to create more of a, a bright point. And I'll zoom back out and you can just continue to add these. I think I'm going to shift to this fourth color, perhaps turn the size of the brush up to 10%. And I think I'm going to start adding some points in and around more of these center areas too. So I'll just zoom in just a touch. And it's got a really nice warm color to it now. And again, we can change. I can change to maybe this end color here. And we can have a really nice mixture of different hues, some nice warm colors, some of the pinks. Try this color, which is fourth. And it's got a little less saturation, which might be what you want. And this is where it's kind of good fun just to add a lot of these points. So you can even put it up bigger for some areas. So 20%, 40% even, if you want one or two really big ones. I think that's a little large for most of the areas. So I'll just get rid of those down to 30%. And again, it depends how much you press on. And just get alternating between the different colors. Go back to this fourth color here. Find an area where it's already lighter, perhaps. And you can just find an area where it's already lighter and you can just amplify that up with a few points and stars. I think more of this cool blue is probably a good idea. I'm doing more of a concentration of this purple that kind of corresponds with the purple area. Just allow it to build up. Change to the darker blue hues. Why not have it in the mix? In addition to that, we can also go in with the airbrushing soft brush. Have it at a, I don't know, Smaller size, maybe the top end of 2%, low on the opacity, 8%. And I think just by adding this effect in with the stars, maybe go to a lighter blue, fifth color along, adding this in with the stars, just sort of bleaching them out. So when you get a collection of stars, you're going to get perhaps a concentration of the kind of surrounding light as well. Soften the stars in with this extra texture. I think that can really work. Maybe try the fourth color along. Again, it matches in with some of the colors. Backwards and forwards between the blue and the purple, in with the stars, and it's just a combination of those effects. Allow it to disperse out towards the peripheral again, using these, the airbrush, soft brush. Now, we've got a lot of the texture in with the other brushes, but there's nothing wrong with just going in there more manually. It is generally the way that I I like to create things anyway. I like adding texture. I like being in control of it. Put it up a bit bigger, 4%. Sometimes the brushes can only get you so far and then really it's just nice to be doing it for yourself. And the soft airbrush I feel is a really nice way of just having the, the brush itself be quite neutral and then you can actually do the textures yourself. I'm just gonna go back a couple of layers to layer seven. I feel like it's a little bit strong. So I'm gonna turn it down to about 80%, still there, it's still having its impact. It's just softened it a little bit and I think that works better. Back to our top layer, back with the luminance light pen and I'm just gonna really enjoy adding some more stars. I'm 
I'm going to go back to the airbrushing, soft brush, 5% size, well, 10% opacity. And I'm just going to soften some of these areas in. Perhaps I'm just going to be a bit more focused, actually, 2% size. And I just want to add more of this mottling in. I can alternate with my colours, light blue, really ramp up some of these, some of this light. Whenever we've got a collection of stars, we can really just further brighten it up as well. Come towards the centre, let's brighten some of these areas up a little bit more. Not everywhere, it's going to be a little bit more focused. Brighter patches here and there. Again, it's a similar mottling to what we were having before when we're using the brushes, like the Leatherwood brush or the Rainforest brush, but this time we're just doing it a bit more manually, a bit more controlled. Put it up to 5% size. There we go. That's just one or two areas, just on the, the edges. That's a bit too light, so we'll go for the next one. Fifth blue. Fifteen percent size, too much. I want a general misting, so I'm just going to do it perhaps a bit more lightly. Let's get rid of some of the black. Go for the third color again. We're on the add blend mode, so it's not going to be too jarring. I'm going to go back to layer seven, duplicate that layer, transform, and again just. Maybe just move that around a little bit, maybe even make it a bit bigger so that it feeds into some of these different areas a little bit more. I feel like we've kind of lost some of that. So I think its impact is quite good when you add a bit more and you can see the impact that that's had. I think I quite like that. I'm going to go to my top layer, create a layer on top, change the blend mode to add. Probably just need to go in there with the white, frankly, with the soft brush and airbrushing, 5% size, 100% opacity. Let's really ramp up the, the light in that center area. It feels appropriate. Go back to the fourth color from the right, still with a soft brush, 5% size, lower on the opacity at 10%. And I'm just going to go through some of these shapes here around, around this center area and just brighten them up a little bit more. Try and stay to where the lighter areas are already. I think that works better. Like so. A few finishing touches with the light pen. A few more stars. And the airbrushing soft brush, just a few extra areas with a low percentage and controlled size, just adding a, a few points, different hues just here and there, just adding to the mix. So I'm using the fourth color. And the fifth colour. Okay, I'm going to leave this tutorial here at this point. I hope you've enjoyed watching. If you like this kind of video, please give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe, and don't forget that bell notification to make sure you're notified of my future videos too. Thanks for watching. See you back here soon.